All right. So we're starting out. We're we're here live here on YouTube and on Instagram with fix my collar. It's looking crazy <laughs> with today's trumpet workshop technique workshop trumpet technique workshop. So I decided to put this workshop on both platforms on Instagram and on YouTube. So for one, um, I could, you know, back up the back up the the recordings because sometimes Instagram is a little funny and it, it uh, stops, it deletes stuff out of nowhere. So uh, today what we have planned is um, for my participants that are registered for this this master class or this workshop called Aaron's Trumpet Workshop. Uh, I'm going to coach a few folks that are here on uh, Instagram. And then you guys can just watch them just be, you know, flies on the wall based on what I tell them and what I suggest and recommend. So if uh, any of you guys are here in, in the building, any of my participants that are here, just let me know, request to join and we can get started, right? So uh, today there's no specific specific uh, topic other than just generally trumpet technique. So how we can play the trumpet better. So I'm just going to say hi to the folks that are here live on Instagram and live here on YouTube. So we got, uh, we got, I don't know, say saying hello. We got uh, Donna Trumpet here, here live. So we got Poppy Joe on the live. We got Nick. So anyone that wants to come join the uh, the live stream or join the the workshop, one of my participants, if you're here, come join and we can get started. While we wait, while I wait for these folks, uh, there's one thing I really want to talk about as far as trumpet technique. And so that thing is the truth about air in the truth about the trumpet. So uh, I'll get to that. We got Miles here on the line. Let's get Miles here on Instagram. And so if you have any questions about trumpet technique and how you can improve it, just ask your questions and uh, we have time at the end, I'll answer them. But we got Miles on the line. Accept him. Hey, what's up, Miles? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Good, good. So, uh, last time we worked together, we were working on Upper Manhattan Medical Group. Yeah. Just learning how to improvise over those those changes over the bridge. Yeah. And so now, what are what are we working on today? What's the goal well, for today? Um. Well. Right now it's like kind of final season and I'm like trying to like, you know, practice my juries and all those tunes. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of getting into the area of being kind of like unhappy, kind of frustrated with the way I'm playing on some of these tunes. I'm kind of like resorting back to the same kind of phrases and stuff, that kind of stuff. Okay. Specifically, um, one tune is rhythm changes. Specifically, I keep kind of resorting back to the same kind of licks and stuff like that. So I'm trying to like figure out how to kind of get out of just playing the same stuff over and over and over again. Okay. So as far as trumpet technique, how is that affecting that? Well, just like trumpet technique in general, I guess. I guess perhaps it's just like kind of just lack of like enough familiarity with, with my horn still, gotcha. and just around just navigating through change something like that. I, and I'm also trying to also trying to get better at tonguing as well because I've I've kind of lacked a lot on. So, uh, double tonguing and triple tonguing specifically. I haven't really done a lot of triple tonguing, but okay. kind of develop that as well. Okay. Is triple tonguing something that you want to use in your improvisation, or is that just like a general? I need to get well, triple tonguing under my finger. I would I'd like to start in, in, like incorporating that kind of like different types, types of types, of different tonguing styles as well into my tonguing, into my playing. Okay. Cool. 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 So you mentioned that you're you're playing the same stuff in your improvisation and. Um, 
why do you why do you think that's a why why don't you like that? Why don't you enjoy that? I don't know, I, I like, you know, like coming up with new ideas and then applying them as a play, right? Like I feel like if I'm playing the same ideas and over again, it's like it's gonna sound kind of uninterest like not interesting to me specifically and I wanna like sound interesting as I'm playing. Gotcha. You know I mean? Gotcha. So you wanna sound more interesting, so you're not playing the same stuff and you wanna make it sound, yeah. you know, like a story or somewhat, right? Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So what tunes you say you're working on rhythm changes? Yeah, yeah. So for my jury, I gotta play six, I believe six tunes. So I'm playing Below Together, What's the Thing Called Love, There Is No Greater Love, um, Autumn Leaves, Rhythm Changes, Emily and Treats, those are the seven, those are the seven or so tunes. The one I'm really I'm really trying to work on is rhythm changes, because I can play rhythm changes fine, but I just want it to sound a lot more interesting than it does right now. Okay. And so what does that mean for you? What what does it mean to be more interesting? I guess um just minima- like minimizing what I'm and breaking stuff down in phrases rather than just thinking of just the whole structure of the tune and just thinking more consciously of rhythm rather than just notes, I guess. Gotcha. Gotcha. What rhythms changes tune are you are you playing? Um specifically I'm playing dexterity. Dexterity. Nice. Uh, Want to play the melody for us? For you know the dexterity melody for us. Just play that real quick. So what what do you like about it and what needs improvement? I like how it kind of jumps around in the range and there's like abrupt stops like the dip dip like um like it doesn't just keep like moving, 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 moving. There's like stop like abrupt stops, which is kinda of cool. Mm-hmm. And and it's nice to play with like drummers somebody that will actually play the shots along with me, which is just kinda of cool. Um some room for improvement would probably be the B section, because it's it's kind of weird like vowel combination wise yeah. so that's something i can work on okay but yeah i, I guess i guess those are those are the, the two main things gotcha as far as the way that you played it what do you like about it not the song itself but wh- how do you why why do you like the way that you play on that song sorry <laughs> what did you what do you like about how you played that song i, well, I just i just like how like like I'm kind of just like bouncing up and down on, on the tune, and it, and it sounds, it feels good to play. Like, but like I, I like, like I, I really like playing that tune specifically. That's just our head. I know a bunch of other you number know, of changes, but that that head specifically is just one of my favorites to play. And it just, it just sounds, it just sounds good every single time I played it. So I guess. Gotcha. So yeah. Gotcha. I, I remember you mentioning something about articulation. Do you have those same problems with with this tune as far as articulation? I'm, I, I'm like working, working on just figuring like getting specific kind of articulation down. I'm kind of still in the earlier comings of figuring out what articulation do I like playing with this head specifically. Okay. So how would you, what would be, what would be some things that you would change about the articulation in this tune? Um, a lot less like single tugging and a lot more slurred stuff. Yeah. Such- and then adding and adding um like kind of accents on you know up or yeah yeah on the other upbeats okay so is that something you you want to work on and kind of touch on today yeah yeah okay. and and then also um just double and triple tightening techniques as well okay okay cool 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 let's let's tackle the tune and how we can articulate that articulate the tune a little bit better or improve on what you already have because when is yeah. your jury uh it's three weeks three three or so weeks okay all right three weeks 
Nice. Okay, cool. So let's uh, work on that. Play that first phrase for me. For me. So the whole the whole first A section. Just a phrase. Just the first phrase. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Slur slur all of that for me. Just slur it all. Slur it like that. And then hit that A flat. Yeah, try to make it, make all the notes sound the same. There's no blips, blops, beeps, or splops, and it's all smooth and slurred. Yeah, that uh, that that uh, that E to A A flat. What do you think happened right there? What happened to that A flat? Why did it like, do that? Uh, not complete control of like just going up and down. Also, I just picked up this horn like yesterday. Like, oh, is that like, new, man? What kind yeah, of horn is it, that? It's a Yamaha eight three three five Zeno. I, I I bought it about a month ago, but it, it was like in the shop for a bit. Yeah, I just got this yesterday. Gotcha. So you just trying to you you just trying to figure it out for right now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So um, let's work on that that D Let's work on that interval right quick. Why do you, well before we do that? Why do you think that note did it? Did you overshoot it or did you undercut it? Like what? Which one? I, I think I overshot it a little bit because because I, I feel like when the first time I played it, I kind of went down to the G instead of the uh, instead of that. The A flat, which is just a semitone way. Oh, okay, okay. So if you overshot it, what do you think you did with your air? What happened with your air if you overshot it? Um, I kind of put too much into it to 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 swap the note. Okay. And what about? Do you think about tongue arch at all when you play? No. At all? None. Not really. No. Okay. So if I asked you, like, what kind of tongue arch did you have? Do you think it's too low or too high when you overshot it? Uh. I wouldn't know, honestly. I, I, I won't even know where to start with, with, with tongue arching at all. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's tackle the air. Let's see if we can have the right air for that note. So just play. Okay. Now play um, a few notes before that. Try to um, imagine that you it's all a long tone and you're just playing straight, like there's just air, and then the notes are riding on that air string. Pretend as if you're playing an A flat the entire time, and all yeah. the other notes are just, they're pit stops, but they're not the final destination. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now the air is good, yeah. but I think we'll make it better if we kind of introduce this thing called tongue arch. Because what, what helps me and what helps other people that I talk to about this is we know the exact slot each note is at. Rather than guessing with the air, you know, if we're just thinking about the air, we're kind of guessing. Yeah. Because yeah. there's multiple, multiple things that go along with playing notes on the trumpet. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is is sing, sing this. Uh Tai ha, tai ha. Try that. Tai ha, tai ha, tai ha. Okay. Now take that same thing that you just sang and just 
blow blow an airstream. But I want you to keep the sound in your head. But I want you to blow as if you're singing that. So I can tell that you're you're playing you're playing the notes in your head because I can see your head moving going. Right? That's good. But let's pretend as if you know trumpet is boring. Trumpet should is trumpet should look boring. Like we shouldn't tell like it, we're playing at all. That's how we get maximum efficiency. So what I want you to do is do the same thing, but keep your head, keep everything still and worry about the tongue arch and keeping a, a forward airstream. All right, now apply that to the horn. And do the fingerings. Good, one more time. Okay, now play it. Apply what we just did. that it's that c to e that's giving us trouble yeah yeah it's just like the bending the bending is that, is that bending of the lip or just or just air no it's not bending of the lip it's more i'm keeping the lips set and you know nothing i'm not moving anything right mm -hmm. but what is moving is my air and my tongue arch and so what you want to kind of think is when i do flex flexibility I'm thinking tai, tai, sing yeah. that tai, ta, tai, tai. Relax the face. So you're like tai, like we don't we don't want to do that. We just want to keep it nice and relaxed, even our face. Like like I said before, trumpet is supposed to look boring. Tai, tai. I can make the sound without moving and scrunching. Ta -yee, ta -yee, relax the full. Ta relax the full. Yeah. You see how the would you describe how would you describe the tongue when you're when you're singing this? It's it's kind of curling upwards a little bit, like okay. I feel like. Yeah. Good. Now apply that to just playing C to E. Ta -yee, ta -yee. Right now, what I want you to do is play chromatics up to E. So start on C and play chromatically up to E and come back down. Okay, do that one more time. Uh, but I want you to notice how's your airspeed, how's the effort, how you know how's the tongue arch when you're playing from C to E. Like, is it all the same or is it different? That's what I want you to answer. Rising a little bit, but not super, super sharp. And I can feel my, my tongue arch a little, like, kind of open, like, kind of rising a little bit. Okay. Okay, so now what I want you to do is do the, the slur, but the same approach as if we're doing that, that chromatic. How does that feel? A lot more 
in control than than before. Uh, that's something I definitely need to work on a lot. Just yeah. like just going in the other end of the upper register and stuff like that. Yeah. Any questions about what we go went over so far? Um, is there any like specific method books that I'd recommend for like just practicing that kind of stuff? Just no bend, but, like no bending and just flexibility like that. Flexibility. Um, yeah. Flexibility in general. Oh, no, no, just like, just like, you know, just like, with like no bending and with like the, that kind of stuff specifically. No bending? What do you mean? Sorry, like just, you know, shifting with what's the other arch going upwards and downwards. Oh, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. So here, here's a. Uh, for everybody, if you're working on your flexibility, this is the 27 group of exercises by uh, Earl Irons. You have this book? I don't have that book, no. Get this book. If you don't have this book, get this book. Because it, it's progressive, and it will teach you exactly what I'm telling you right now. Yeah. And it starts, you know, simple. But if you can master at least this fifth page, your flexibility will be pretty solid. Yeah. You know? Um, it's really simple, but if you can master this fifth page, stuff like that won't be an issue. Awesome. So, again, this is the 27 groups of exercises by Earl Irons. And just work on page five at a slow tempo, 60 BPM. Don't start at 120, which they recommend. But start at, start at 60. And that will get you right. And ignore uh, ignore the repeats. Don't do any of the repeats. Do everything at 60 BPM and slowly but surely bump up the tempo every six clicks once you once it feels like comfortable. Do you have any other books that you recommend for just building um like routine and practicing rudiments specifically? Like one specific book or one specific exercise for just building routine, um like technique and just like rudiments of like like rudimental skills. So, like, one exercise that kind of targets everything? Yeah, yeah. Or, like, or like a series of exercises, like, like, like a specific series of exercises in, like, a specific book. In a specific book. There's yeah. um, this Michael Sachs book. It's called Daily, I think it's Daily Trumpet Routine. Or daily, let's see. I think I might know which one you're talking about. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a green book. It's a green okay. book, and it just deals primarily with how to build your your routine, how to build your trumpet routine. Is there a specific exercise that you use just for building a group, like routine, just like one exercise specifically? One exercise that I use to build my my technique, um, it's it's called, well, I call it, and I deem it the uh, six levels exercise. And it's just a chromatic scale, just like what we did today, going from C to E. Doing that, but I split up the chromatic scale six ways. Interesting. And so that way it helps me target just specific areas in my range. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's very simple. It's just a chromatic scale, and, it, and we're just working in thirds. So from C to E, E to G sharp, G sharp to E. And so each level, each piece is its own level, like a video game. And so the goal with that is to master each level before going on to the next one. Really simple, but a lot can be said if we just really focus on the chromatic scale and mastering that because yeah. it's the foundation of everything else that comes after it. Because mm -hmm. in Western music, we only have the half step, like the smallest interval is the half step. So if we master the half step, that's the foundation. And so we yeah. build off of there. So use a chromatic scale, split it up in six ways, work on thirds at a time. So from C to E, E to G sharp, G sharp to C, C to, and then C to E, and just keep on going up until you want to stop. Like there's no there's no limit really. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. So let's go back to that. Uh, you want to you want to work on that that melody some more? Let's apply everything that we just did. Sure. 
to the melody. Let's let's kind of remind ourselves about the um, what we need to do in order to play that C to E real smooth. Da e a e. So play the chromatic scale or the chromatics from C to E once once more. Close your eyes and do it. And I just want you to focus on like, how does your body feel? How does your air feel? How does the tongue arch feel when you do do just that? So close your eyes and just do CD. Nice. Now play. Now slur it. The same way that you played that chromatic, so I want you to slur it. Okay, it got better over time. What'd you do? I kind of backed off a little bit on, like, just going to, like, super, super, like, I kind of backed off with my tongue arch because I was kind of just going like really sharply moving up. I realized like kind of incrementally kind of move up a little bit and also kind of bringing it down a little bit because I felt like I was kind of uh, kind of above the bed a little bit more, more more than I should have been. Gotcha. So, yeah. Good. Good. It, was, it sounded better as you went on. And the reason why I say that is because um, there's two reasons. If, if our flexibility isn't um, isn't lining up, like say if we're getting like a, a air ball or if we're overshooting the note, there's two things that's either wrong with that. The first thing is the tongue is coming before the air. Yeah. So you'll hear ta or the or the air is coming before the tongue. So that's the second part. The air is coming before the tongue. So you hear da fa da fa like the air is is not lining up with the tongue movement. Yeah. Versus if we do like the tongue is going is is coming um forward or it's it's coming before the air if it's doing the opposite but for you the air is coming before the tongue so you got to make sure uh the timing is right when you move the air and when you move the tongue arch have to be locked in <laughs> Like it starts to sound like duh, the tongue isn't moving. It's the air is just staying stagnant. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Uh all right. So now let's go back to just slurring the entire melody and keep all that, keep the stuff that we talked about in mind, making sure the tongue arch and the air are working together at the same time. <laughs> So what'd you yeah. think? Uh, it was like I was finding it a little bit difficult to, to be conscious of the airflow and of notes as well. 
So that's something I, I definitely should work on a lot more. But yeah, just like thinking of just, you know, the tongue arch specifically and how it's, you know, how how much I need to like move it to get the note and as close to it as possible is a challenge. So I should definitely be working a, a lot more just focusing on my tongue arch and practicing flexibility stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so just making sure that everything is slurred for sure. Yeah. Because that's going to, like, if we slur everything, that's going to help our tonguing. Because we know the right amount of air that we need, and we know the right amount of, you know, breath support, the right amount of, you know, tongue arch that we need for specific yeah. notes. Uh -huh. So slurring everything is, uh, is a good tool for sure. Good, good, good. So... Um, now I know you say that you you want to slur more and that it was the your phrasing was a, a bit tonguey. Yeah. Right. So this is also good because now what you can do, and if no one else is here in the building, we can just rock rock out with you. <laughs> um, we can figure out what are the important notes of the phrase because that's the most important thing. Yeah. It is not all the notes are important, but just some of them. So if we know the important notes, we're able to, you know, emphasize the ones that are really important and not have the tongue so much. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So let's first take that first phrase again. And let's, where is that, where is that, again, where is that phrase going? What's, where is that, that note? Where is it going to? The first note's going is, is the five of the, of the chords, the first chord C. So it's it's going up to just C, just da da da. It's just five five one, five one. Then. So we're we're you were kind of like um, zoom out just a bit because we're in the we're in the trenches, okay. as far as like notes. But I want you to zoom out and 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 say okay, if I play this phrase, where are we going in this phrase? On a, in a bird's eye view. Where, so where are we going? The whole phrase is kind of like built on just playing, like going on that C note. So we go down, so we go up to the C, then we go up. So we go up to the C, then we go above the C, and then we go below the C, and we go back up to the C. Below, so. <laughs> All I do is kind of just going up and around, around just C. Okay, going towards that C. But we'll beat up. going yeah. to that C. Okay. Okay, what's the next, like, um, what's the next point that we're going to in that phrase? Um, well, we go down to the B. So, beat up, right? Okay. So, we go up, up, the E goes down to the C and go to the B and then they go back up to the C. Okay. That's where we're yeah. going. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's what's next? We go. Which is a flat. It's the that's the flat nine of 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 G7. Okay. Okay. So we have three yeah. points that we kind of need to aim for. Just based on what you you say, right? Yeah. Uh, at C, ba do be da, ba do do da, bu di da. So two C's and A flat. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So I want you to play it in a way that targets those notes. Only to only tongue those notes. Everything else slur. <laughs> Okay, so what I want you to do is is tongue the notes that you said are the. Actually, what I want you to do let's let's take out the difficulty just a little bit. I want you to tongue just the last note. Everything else slur. Okay. 
Nice. Now, on the end of it, is it is it sustained or is it like a is it a short note? It's sustained. Very fun sustained. Okay. It's held out. Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, excellent. So, accent that last note one more time. Slur everything. Accent that last note. Yeah. 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 Good. 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 Now, what I want you to do is. Tongue the the e, uh, in the beginning. So da do da that note, da do da. Tongue that note, and the last note. Yeah, try it again. Nice. Now tongue the other e that's on there. Da do da da do do da. Try it again. Okay. Right. Now, what I want you to do is tone the D. The D before the E. The D, the D before that last E. Yeah. There we go. Make everything straight, though. But accent those notes. There we go. Now, now tongue the first note. Now, now tongue the first note, and everything else is slurred. Okay, try it again. Yeah, tongue all the E's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Try that. Yeah, try it again. Uh, just tongue the the ones. There we go. There we go. So not the little turn. So don't tongue the turns. Like leave those alone. But the top notes definitely tongue those. But yeah. Nice. Now tongue the the C at the beginning. So tongue both the G the G and the C. But make sure the. Um, the notes sound the same. They have the same value. Okay. So the G and the C have to sound the same. I'm really flat because it's cold here. So tongue the first two notes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Try it again. How does that feel based on based on what you played before? It feels a lot better. It feels a lot more like you know, structured and it feels a, a lot more strong and more like, you know, I, this is, this is the head, this is the melody kind of thing. Yeah. Does it feel easier to play? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 
I, I'd say so too. It's, it sounds a lot easier than doing, and this is this is just an exaggeration. So it's not what you did per se, but doing yeah, yeah. it, da do da do da do da 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 do, 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 like that's a lot of work. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so if we're playing it, da 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 da, da like. We don't need to actually tongue all that much. We just need to tongue the most important note in the phrase. Yeah. So we do, 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 do. like, huh, like refreshing and like relax. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So just tongue the important notes. Don't tongue all the notes. And I yeah. think, uh, and I believe that the entire song would be a, your articulation will be so much better mm -hmm. if you kind of go through phrase by phrase, or just look and listen to the recording. Because I, I I don't know I don't know this tune. I'm just going on based on things that sound good to me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And based on like certain accented principles, like what notes should be accented. Those are just principles, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know I don't know this tune at all. But what I do know is what what it's supposed to sound like, or you know, in the style, yeah. right? Yeah. So go go throughout, you know, in your practice, just go throughout phrase by phrase, take it apart. And I want you to listen to how they play it for one. And then two, see how you can match that. And then three, focus on like, like analyze, okay, what are the, the notes? What are the important notes that they're accenting, right? Mm -hmm. And that, and that, and then slur everything else. Don't worry about tonguing everything, but just worry about tonguing those important notes, those accents, and it will be a lot smoother for sure. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. You sounded good, Miles. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Anything else before we before we go? I know we've been we on here for like forty minutes, but. Mm, um, I don't think so. No, not really. All right. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Well, yeah, so work on that. We're, um, have your focus on that. It's the important notes. Tongue those important notes and slur everything else. And it should be a lot cleaner. Yeah, awesome. Thank cool, you man. so much. No problem. Take care. All right, y'all. Uh, there's a lot of folks that that were uh, kind of saying stuff and, and commenting. And so I just want to get to those. So if we have any, any further questions, comments, or concerns, I want to kind of hit those up. So yeah, shout out you know, give some hearts, give some likes to Miles because he he it you gotta be brave to do this for sure. So I I you know I I congratulate Miles for, for being up here and um we we chopping it up and and you know getting some things done. So that's good, that's good. So give some hearts for Miles, uh press like on the uh, on the video on YouTube congratulate him and he's working hard man so uh yeah so let me get to some youtube comments and if there's anybody on instagram that have that has any questions um put them in the chat oh uh we also had uh we had some uh some badges that were purchased here on instagram so i appreciate uh poppy joe b3 for supporting the stream with the badges uh, saying he enjoyed every minute of this live stream. So that's cool. That's cool. Uh, excellent. Excellent. So thank you, Joe, for, for supporting the stream. And uh, cool. Let's get to some comments here on YouTube. So we got... So we got... Let's see. I don't know if you're still here, but we got uh, Piyush. I don't know if you, that's the way that you say it, but uh, you said that my teacher writes the key notation below the notes and I get stuck without them. How can I learn staff notation? Love from India. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Now, uh, if you want to, you know, really get better at learning those notes, these are for my beginners out there. Uh, if you want to learn the notes without having to depend on notation or the writing in the, the note names, what you can do is when you practice your scales or practice anything, treat it as a mental exercise by just saying the note names out loud 
and fingering along. So say like if we're playing the C major scale, I know this is super basic, but this is what I would do. And this is what I coach my private students to do. So what you're gonna do is say we're working on C major scale. This is what you're gonna do. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, right? So after, you, like, say, you know, you have the notes written down, but you're going to practice mentally because really that issue is a, is a mental issue. It's a, not to say you're crazy, but it's more so a mental exercise. So it's not about the trumpet. It's really about like recognizing the notes and doing the fingerings. So that's going to be an easy way for anybody to, uh, to practice without wasting chops, right? So practice, you know, mentally doing, saying the note names out loud and doing the fingerings. That's what's going to really help you with learning the notes. Now, bonus points, bonus points, if you're able to sing the notes and do this. So uh -huh. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Am I right? Right? Somewhat. I'm a little flat, but whatever. C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Right? So bonus points, brownie points, if you can sing it and do the fingerings and names. Okay? So that's going to help you learn the notes. Cool? Good. All right. We got Nick saying, what is a good resource to use for understanding chord notations? That's a good question. There's there's a there's a ton of theory books out there for sure. So, but um, you know, Jamie Abersall has a free booklet. It's like a it's like a and I have like millions of these. It's like a gray booklet, right? And uh, a gray and red booklet, and it has the notation, the chord notations on there. But if you look on any any of his books, he has that that scale syllabus in the in the chords on it. But I think what will help help you out more is is context. So, like I always say, like context is key. So, if you know your diatonic chords, if you know your your diatonic triads and your diatonic seventh chords uh, in a major scale, then that's going to help you recognize those chords so let's see let's see i don't have anything on me right now oh i got this book right so if you at least know your diatonic chords you can take a tune take a standard tune and let's see yeah i know this isn't trumpet technique but you know why not? Let's see what, what we got in here. Okay, come rain or come shine, right? Come rain or come shine. Take a real life example. And what you're going to do, if you know, let's see, what key is it in? Do, 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 do. So it looks like it's, it's, it's in G. So I would say... Learn your G major scale and learn the G diatonic chords. So the first one is major. The second chord is minor. The third chord is minor, so on and so forth. And what you're going to do is circle, circle all the chords that belong to that key. Circle all the chords that belong to the key. So if you're in G major, if you see an E minor, chord, then you know that belongs to G. If you see a D, D minor, or no, not D minor, that doesn't belong there. But if you see, let's say, do, 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 has a lot, has lots of uh, secondary dominance in this, in this tune. Uh, so E minor, we got E minor. Do, 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 do. So it's really that E minor. <laughs> we got D7 at the end, finally. We got some D7s in there, but 
go throughout a tune and see and see if those diatonic chords fit fit the key. So circle them and then and then yeah. But it's better it's better to to learn something in context of a tune so you know how it applies. <laughs> I'm kind of losing my train of thought. But take a tune, any tune. And if it says it's in G, then then figure out like, okay, what are the diatonic chords of G? And then circle all the diatonic chords you re you recognize in the tune. Anything else, it's secondary. It's like a secondary chord structure. It's this. I can't go into it now, but <laughs> man, I'm long winded, ain't, ain't I? Sheesh. Okay, I try not to be. All right, Francisco here on YouTube. <laughs> Francisco here on YouTube says, um, I'm 52 years old and a trumpet jazz player. The best performance ever seen is Howard McGee in 1973 live. I love her, man. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Everett says, hey, Aaron, I like your trumpet teaching. Maybe you can help me with right, the right tongue and lip technique, how to play the high note. My name is Evert or Everett from the Netherlands. Cool, cool, cool. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Let's see if I'm missing anything. K Man Cedos 86 says, What are basics to start playing some jazz? Basics is learning melodies. That's the basics. So I wouldn't say try to learn all the theory in the world. I would say learn melodies. Start with learning a melody. Start there. That's the basic. And after that, go from there. So if you learn the melody, then figure out, okay, what do these like symbols mean? What do these chord symbols mean? And so after that, okay, what's what's the key that they're telling me? After that, okay, what are the, like I said about, you know, said to Nick, like what are the diatonic chords of that key? And then do a quick YouTube search, like what are diatonic chords? What is that, <laughs> right? And then see if you can recognize it in the tune. And then after that, probably before that, start learning a solo or a lick or something that's that's in that in that song or you know how you can apply it to that that tune. But the basics really is just learning music. Just learn music, and then learn then learn some basic theory and then learn a solo. Uh, Afonso says, hey man, I love your content. Do you have any recommendations for trumpet notes sounding less airy? I feel like every note is air than sound. That's a good question. That's a good trumpet question for sure. So my thing is, if you're having trouble with airy notes, Make the notes more airy. What? <laughs> if you're having troubles, if you're having trouble with airy notes, if your notes sound airy, make the notes more airy. And so your question is like, okay, Aaron, why do I want to do that? I actually want, I don't want that. Why would I do that? You're going to do that because you're going to figure out how to not make it airy. Because if you do the, if you do the opposite of what I just told you, you're going to figure out how to not make an airy sound, right? So if you can make the notes more airy, you can make the notes less airy. The two, the two tech, the two things are one and the same. They're the same technique. It's the same thing that you do. So, for instance. <laughs> Like I'm using the same mechanics I would if I were to make it airy and if I were to make it less airy. Make sense? Cool. Alfonso says, oh, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Simple, right? I try to make trumpet as simple as possible. As simple as possible. Even if I even if I, uh, I tend to rant and I tend to just over explain, but, but yeah. <laughs> So if you want to be less airy, 
with your notes, make the notes more airy. All right, if you like this content, please like the video uh, here on YouTube. Give me some hearts on uh, Instagram, especially if you're watching here live. If you're watching here live, give me hashtag live. Uh, also here on uh, YouTube, give me hashtag live. If you're here on the replay, give me replay in the comments. Because again, this is going to help you know get this out to many more people so they can benefit just like you, how you guys are watching me now. So um, if you're watching live or here on the replay, tell me if you're watching live or tell me what, tell me if you're watching on the replay. Now, if you, if you would like more advice or more, uh, more techniques and works, you know, I've been talking a lot <laughs> this morning. <laughs> so for sure. So if I got a workshop, just going to say it. I got a workshop, a paid workshop uh, this weekend. It's called Bebop Unlocked. Bebop Unlocked. And it's a workshop dedicated to helping trumpet players um, improvise and unleash their own creativity. Right? So if you're, what's up, email? So if you're struggling to, or if you want more freedom in your improvisation, this is the workshop to go to, especially if you're a trumpet player, because all the techniques, all the methods that I'm going to discuss and teach are specifically designed for trumpet players. So uh, I just made this announcement yesterday and tickets are flying off the shelves virtually. So if you want to be a part of this workshop, um, there, you can click the link in the description. You can... Um, and if you're here on Instagram, DM me, um, DM me, and I'll send you the link to to the on how to register. So if you're interested in uh, improvising better on the trumpet, if you want to have more freedom, if you don't want to always pass the solo along to the saxophone player, or pass the solo along to the to the piano player, this is the workshop to be at because. Is def it's it's methods and things that I go in deep in depth with that's definitely changed my playing for the good. So uh Bebop Unlocked is the workshop this weekend. If you can't make it live, you can definitely get the replay once you reserve your seat and get your ticket. So you'll automatically have access to the replay once the workshop is over. Cool. So it's called Bebop, Bebop Unlocked uh, on YouTube. You can click the link below and uh, go register on Instagram. Go ahead and just DM me and I'll send you the link to this workshop. Cool. So make sure you get your tickets because the like save your spot because these, these tickets flying fast, uh, faster than I've ever seen. So, all right, you guys, if there's no other further questions, <laughs> if there's no other further questions, uh, I'll uh, I'll let y'all go. Uh, Alfonso says, "How do you get into trumpet? Did you go? How did I get into trumpet? Did you go to music school? Yeah. Well, I didn't go to a like music school. I just went to Illinois State University and got my uh, bachelor's degree in music education." my teacher certification to teach bands, choir, orchestra from uh, kindergarten to 12th grade or, or high school. So, yeah. But how did I get into trumpet? I mean, I saw the I saw the trumpet. Uh, and and I said, hey, that looks easy to play. So let me try it out. So I tried it out. Uh, the guy that was helping me try it out, he um he said, oh, man, you're a natural. You made a sound. I was like, cool. So I'll just I'll just play trumpet then. So nothing too sexy. It's not a sexy story. But, you know, I just saw it and I thought it was easy. And I made a sound. He was like, cool, you can make a sound. Cool. I'm rocking with the trumpet. I didn't even try anything else. So. So goes to show you, like, if I would have if I didn't get a sound on trumpet, I probably would have chose something else. 
probably would have chose something else that looked easier, probably trombone. But <laughs> Lord knows that's not easier than trumpet. So cool. All right, y'all. I've been talking long enough. Uh, if there's no further questions, or comments, or concerns, I'll let y'all enjoy the rest of your day, your, your night, and your afternoon. And I'll talk to y'all soon. What's up, Sam? Hey, Cynthia. All right. Peace, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Uh, there's going to be another session later today uh, at, at 2 p.m., I think. 2 p.m. Peace and love to you as well. There's going to be another session today exclusively exclusively uh, dealing with improvisation. So make sure you, you pop in for that. If not, catch me on the replay. Cool? So meet me at 2 o'clock here on Instagram, here on YouTube. And I'll see you all later. Peace. See you Instagram. See you YouTube.